Hi, this is Paul Gregg. I wanted to introduce a new subject uh, different from my normal backyard roller coaster adventures. For uh, about 15 years now, our family has been traveling the world a lot, and uh, we've done it in a lot of different ways. And one of the favorite ways we found almost by accident was that uh, we rent motorhomes around the world. And I was going to just introduce a very short video introduction to motorhome rental in Europe. Um, a lot of Americans love motorhomes. Americans would love to go to Europe. A lot of them think it's too expensive. Why not rent a motorhome in Europe? Uh, they're quite reasonable. And uh, really, uh, the real back door to Europe is, is a motorhome. There's some things you give up, but uh, gee, we love it. Uh, we've traveled all kinds of ways in, in about every kind of way there is in Europe. And uh, we like this the best. If you have elderly parents or family members with disabilities, uh, small children or more than two children, um, a motorhome is really your best and sometimes your only way to tour Europe. At least some of them, you know, people think it's too expensive to travel to Europe, but if, if you combine this with a credit card that gives you air miles, uh, nowadays it can be quite reasonable to go to Europe and you can see everything. Um, and it's the most flexible way to go to Europe. Your planning is can be kind of loose. You only have two reservations, the air, the airplane and the motorhome, and a list of things to do. And, and that's how simple it is. You can be very flexible. And you can take people that wouldn't normally otherwise be able to go, really elderly people or family members with disabilities. Advantages that we see uh, generally is there's just two reservations, the airline and the motorhome. Occasionally you might need to reserve a, a ferry or a campground in high season, but we've never done that. We usually go to Norway in the in September and uh, never had any trouble getting on a ferry. There might be a special event you want to, to plan your uh, trip around. Uh, the greatest thing is the flexibility. You can slow down, speed up, you look at the weather in the Alps and and uh, decide if you want to go there sooner or later. And and uh, if you really like a place, you can stay longer. You don't have to worry about reservations and keeping to a schedule. You can just do what makes sense at the time. If you find a local event to go to, a festival or something, you can just take an extra half a day or something and, and do exactly what you want to do. If somebody in your family gets tired or sick, uh, they want to stay in the motorhome while you go into the castle or on the hike or through the museum, then that's perfectly fine. Uh, every European town or city has at least one campground. They, When the Europeans go on vacation, most of them go camping. They do it a lot longer than we do, you know, at, in one place. They go down to the coast and go for two weeks at a campground or something, and the campground's down in the near the Mediterranean are just spectacular. Uh, so, uh, camping is how a lot of them go on vacation. You meet a lot of uh, other Europeans. You you don't meet any hardly any Americans when you go camping in Europe. Don't worry about the language. English is the way everybody communicates. Um, if a German wants to talk to an Italian, they do it in English, generally. So we're really lucky we know English, and it's kind of a universal travel language. Uh, motorhome is less expensive than other ways to, to do this. We know this by experience. Typical five to six person motorhome rentals, 125 to 150 a day, even in high season. Uh, there's sometimes they offer deals in the spring, relocation or factory delivery deals that are make it even less expensive than that. Uh, generally, there's unlimited miles, unlike the American RV rentals. RV rental in Europe is about half the price of RV rental in, in America. The fuel's more expensive, but the distances are much shorter than America, and they get good gas mileage, usually a five-speed diesel. The current uh, Euro-pound dollar exchange is real favorable to Americans. It's a great time to go to Europe. Flights are cheap. They've never been cheaper. Uh, campgrounds are very nice, safe inexpensive around 30 bucks a night uh, free camping we usually free camp every other night uh, just uh, any on a on a freeway a rest stop is they don't mind if you just stay overnight 
or in a if you're gonna to go to a castle in the morning uh, the parking lot there they don't really mind if you if you stay the night and then some uh, popular tourist destination towns just offer special parking lots for motorhomes that are very reasonable with restrooms just outside the old city wall it's in Bruges or, or Rotenburg this is the sign you follow to get to the uh, campground in any particular town Possible disadvantages, and this is important. Uh, you really don't want to see big cities in a motorhome. You want to go to the big city and rent an apartment downtown in Rome, Paris, or London, and uh, and then do the motorhome rental before or after that big city experience. Um, you can't really drive into the old parts of any town or city. Um, uh, a lot of them will have motorhome parking that's set up for a lot of a lot of Europeans have motorhomes and, and it's just set up for that. You just follow the signs or your GPS and you're fine. Someone in the group, this is important, someone in your group, your family has to be willing and able and even possibly happy to drive a 20 to 26 foot motorhome about the size of a small delivery van on their European vacation. Uh, uh, parking in larger towns and cities Occasionally can be difficult, but usually you can park where any tour bus or or uh, delivery van parks, and uh, it's it's fine. The roads in the Alps are uh, very tricky and uh, lots of fun. Uh, this is a camp typical camp campground in Norway. I've done I've updated a, a spreadsheet I made the first time we went, but I've updated it recently for the new to new. Uh, expenses. This is the cost of comparing a European trip for two adults and two youth for 28 days with full airfare. The airfare can be reduced a lot if you go on uh, companion passes and uh, have a lot of miles built up uh, by using your credit cards every day. Uh, motorhome rental in Germany it can be uh, reduced by 19% if you go 31 days or more because you're considered a temporary resident and they just fold that into the deal at, at the place you, you rent. So that's a huge savings. We never skimp on the savings, on the spending. This blue thing is, is spending. We go get local rail passes, local city passes, uh, boat cruises in the Norwegian fjords. Uh, we don't skimp on, on uh, anything. Uh, this is the major part is the airfare and then the your rail if you're over in your rail and hotel That's how much it would cost for a family of four to go to Europe for a month $18,000 is probably about right um, Airfares are the same of course all of these airfares could be reduced with mileage programs This is your motorhome price and this is without any discount. This is without the 19% discount or uh, discount for for anything else um Lodging is, uh, this is for campgrounds, this is for hotels. Hotels, uh, if they're near a train station and you're doing the year rail, the expensive hotels are near the, rate, the train station. If you want a reasonably priced hotel, you have to hike a uh, long ways from the train station. And then you can't really start sightseeing until you get your stuff into your hotel every day so you carry everything on your pat on your back every day with your rail and hotel your rail is a great way to see Europe don't get me wrong we've done that it's a wonderful thing and uh, but you are going to carry everything on your back every day um, motorhome and camping uh, is what I have and I say you know I, I pretty much said the same amount of, of spending on souvenirs and, and experiences uh, and local rail passes and stuff all the same if there is a fuel cost for the motorhome if you took a minivan and a tenting you're gonna to have to set your tent up every day uh, it's just not as nice as a motorhome and really uh, more expensive uh, just because the minivans go over there they cost a lot um, and the food if you're gonna if you have a motorhome you're more likely to eat in the motorhome a lot and not have to eat out as much your rail and hostel is a cheap way to go but uh, not nearly as inexpensive as the motorhome so you're gonna end up spending about four or five hundred dollars a day including everything um, airfare motorhome rental 
everything. And that's really less than Disneyland or Hawaii when you think about it. And you can go to Europe and see all these countries and all these cultures and everything. It's just an amazing adventure. This is a typical motorhome, uh, medium sized one and a larger one. This is sleep two to four. It's wonderful for a couple. Uh, you want to look for one where the seats in the front turn around to the table. There's a fixed bed in the back so you don't have to fiddle with anything at night. This is a, we took one about this size, maybe 22 feet long. This is one of the larger ones that they have over there. And uh, it has uh, sleeping over the top, over the cab, uh, two bunk beds in the back, and then a, uh, an area here where either a, a bed has to be made up from the table or they have a, uh, a pull down bed up here like this one. This actually is an elevator kind of a thing. It pulls down and you can sleep up there. So what to look for in these, 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 the most, the motorhome re rental agencies in Europe, in England, Germany, everywhere, they don't have units that are under three years old, that are over three years old. Uh, they, they're always over turn, turning over their, their fleet about every three years. So they're all, all look like brand new. Uh, some consideration here. You can read this, stop the video, and read it. But that's some considerations there for for what you want. For what you want. How to plan it? You just uh, get a list of things that uh, people have told you about, or your travel shows, trip advisor, travel books. You make kind of a list. You decide what you're interested in. Is it history, food, art, scenery, adventure? Uh, tailor it to your particular interests. Uh, you can do a genealogy trip. You can do a uh, music trip, you can do food trip, you, you know, just whatever you really you like to see, a uh, war history or anything like that, or engineering. I'm an engineer. I love to go see engineering things, and we see a lot of that kind of stuff that uh, you wouldn't normally think about. Uh, you make a list of stops. You rank them by the, the 15 things we have to do, then 15 things we, we'd like to do, and 15 things we'd like to do if there's time. Map them out in Google Earth or on a map and kind of make a loop. Uh, route and then just uh, take off and see what happens. Uh, you can have special stops for local festivals and events. You want to plan around that. Uh, map them out. Decide on some kind of a loop. You only make the two reservations. Packing is less restricted than backpacking, but you still want to kind of pack small. Uh, this is an example trip. This is my family. In 2003, we took a uh, a, a motorhome trip for 28 days through Europe, and this is what it is. We started off in Munich, rented there, went out to the lakes region of Salzburg. Uh, great campgrounds all the way. Uh, loop, loop back, went to Innsbruck, back up, dipped up into the castle country in southern Germany. Uh, went over the top of the Dolomites, the Alps in in Italy, down to Venice. Great campground at Venice, across the bay from Venice. Bought a two-day ferry pass and went and saw Venice for two days. Uh, down to Florence, great campground there, up to the Cinque Terre. There's a town, the next town north of the five Cinque Terre towns is called Levanto. Stayed there for a couple days and bought a local rail pass to go see the Cinque Terre towns and hike between them. Kind of bombed up through northern Italy up to Switzerland over some over a couple passes in Switzerland and to Interlaken. Uh, actually Lauterbrunnen. Uh, it's a great place there, great campground. I'll, I'll show you a picture in a minute. And uh, stayed four days there. Uh, bombed up kind of through France, stopped at this, uh, an American military cemetery, up to uh, the Netherlands, windmills. Uh, was visited some family up here, uh, distant uh, cousins, distant relatives, and uh, stayed at their uh, dairy farm for a couple nights. Then down through an industrial region in Germany, through Cologne and the Rhine River area, back through Frankfurt, and kind of make a, a quick trip down to Munich. So that's 3,500 miles in 28 days. The average only 135 miles a day, just two or three hours of driving a day. Spent about $1,100 on fuel. Uh, favorite stories. Uh, I'll probably make videos about each one of these if this is popular. But basically, uh, we started off our first trip. Uh, my dad had had a stroke, but they, my mom and dad still wanted to go to the Netherlands. So we did a 10 day trip in October. And my wife found this deal about a motorhome. And 
it just worked out so great for my dad. Every museum and castle had a wheelchair. Uh, and if my dad got tired and, and wanted to stay in the motorhome, he stayed there and read and rested and we went and saw stuff. It just worked out great for a disabled person. Uh, driving on the roads is really can be really tricky and when they get small in southern Italy and Norway and Scotland and England and Scotland you drive on the left you, you want that's a big challenge the German Autobahn is great it's just wonderful you're tripping along at 70 miles an hour but you don't want to get in that fast lane the left lane there's people going 140 and uh, miles an hour and you don't want to you just don't want to get in there. You'll you won't see them in your rearview mirror, and then all of a sudden they'll be right on top of you. So just there's usually three lanes. You can pass the trucks in the middle lane and and leave the fast lane to the fast people. Alpine mountain passes. You usually pass them on the way up, and they pass you on the way down. Uh, you just gear down and go down the, the switchbacks, and and we love going over the Alps. We visited relatives, we've gone to found a lot of local festivals, and then we have done some genealogy in England Hall and Wales and Scotland and tailored our trip around that. So here's just a bunch of uh, pictures from different trips we've taken. This is the 2003 trip with the whole family, four kids, and uh, it's very educational for them. Uh, went to a concentration camp, the American military graves, the Da Vinci Museums in Italy, went 28 days all over Europe. This is typical of the Hallstatt, Austria, in the Lakes region, the campground. This is the campground. You're there with the other European campers. This is inside the town, and this is up on the top of the funicular, and I pointed an arrow there to where the uh, little campground is. This is another uh, nice place in Austria. The Salzburg campground kind of overlooks the city. Uh, we ran into a guy who was cleaning one of these shoulder-mounted cannons and found out there was a festival in a town about 10 miles away. Uh, went over there for a half a day and, and watched these guys parade. There's about 10 clubs that parade around and with hundreds of these uh, shoulder-mounted cannons from 300 years ago. And, and they uh, had parades in the morning and in a soccer field, they shot their cannons all afternoon. So it was really fun in Salzburg. This is a typical, this is a parking area just for motorhomes near uh, Neuschwanstein Castle in southern Germany. Uh, this is just some, some pictures of uh, motorhomes. Uh, we've stopped for lunch different places. Uh, this is a ferry from Croatia to Italy on a, a trip in 2015. Just my wife and I went down the Croatian coast and then over to Italy and up, up took our time going coming up Italy. This is a campground in Sorrento, Italy, near Amalfi. You don't want to drive the Amalfi Coast in a motorhome. Just get a bus from Sor Sorrento or some town you're camped in. This campground was beautiful. It overlooked the, the ocean. And and uh, this is Dubrovnik. The ferry left from Dubrovnik. So we saw a lot of Croatia on that trip. This is uh, the campground we in Levanto, the Cinque Terre. We ran into a local festival where they put... Uh, flower petals in designs on the street and at night they have a torchlight parade. So like I said we, we bought a, a rail pass, just a local rail pass that took us to all these different uh, Cinque Terre towns and hiked between them and took the, the ferries and the, and the rail road between them. This is typical um, at Bruges in Belgium. There's a, there's a parking lot especially for motorhomes. You can stay there overnight for like $10, 8 euros. This is Bruges. Uh, this is the campground at Rotenburg, Otober, and uh, this is uh, going inside. So you're just outside the city wall here. You can go in in the morning, evening, night, and miss the crowds and, and have a great time at these old cities. This is the campground in Florence, the view of the city. Uh, it's a walk or a short bus ride down into the Duomo and, and see, Venice, see Florence. This is the campground in Venice. I was talking about across the bay from... Venice, you buy a local ferry pass for two days and just go all around Venice and all the islands of Venice. This is one of our favorite places, the Lauterbrunnen campground. This is how close the campground is to those waterfalls at Lauterbrunnen. Uh, you buy a Jungfrau regional rail pass right at the office at the campground. And uh, we spend five days doing all the funiculars, uh, aerial, tram, aerial tramways and buses and trains in the whole Jungfrau region, and that's a wonderful place. This is just uh, across 
the mountain at Grindelwald, Switzerland. This is the campground. You can tell it's just a farmer's field most of the time. And uh, it was a wonderful campground right under the Eiger. Uh, this is a camp above. This is a, a hike we took above, above there up at first. And watching the uh, paragliders up at first, right in front of the Eiger. That's the campground at Zermatt. You can tell it's just a farmer's field. And uh, this is only about a mile from Zermatt. You, you catch a bus up there or walk up to Zermatt. And then you do a, some regional rail uh, trips up in the Zermatt area. Ferry on the Rhine, Swiss Mountain Pass. There's our motor home parked on a Swiss Mountain Pass. This is a, a Norwegian ferry, and this is a, a road. Sometimes down the fjords, the, there's a single lane highway, and about every 400 meters, there's a wide spot where you want to get behind a, a semi and just stay behind him. And uh, that's the best way to do it. Uh, worst case, you might meet somebody, and somebody's going to have to back up to a wide spot. These are the roads in Western Norway. Our GPS shows how windy, how, how many switchbacks there can be. There's a bus on this hairpin turn. It's really exciting, but uh, the drivers are really professional and uh, they know what to do. This is a lunch stop in Western Norway uh, on a fjord. And uh, this is just some scenery as you drive along. We did go to an England steam fair on one trip. Uh, you pay to camp out with everybody else there. It's all locals no Americans, and uh, they get together. There were 19 of these uh, steam tractors that they fired up with coal. There's a whole carnival there and a whole bunch of old vehicles and miniature steam engines that they parade around. It has a wonderful thing to plan a trip around an England steam fair. This is the Yorkshire Dales, uh, middle of England. We just love uh, tooling along in our motorhome out here. You can ask a farmer to camp somewhere or just, they have a lot of camp. Like I say, every campground, every town has a campground uh, right near the town. And, and it's just a wonderful way to go. This is the Richmond Keep. We're up on top of a castle here. This is in the town of Richmond. You can see our little motorhome parked out there. This is a narrow road in, in England. Uh, you, you know, you're not going to, if you, you you're not going to pass this truck. You just get behind him and be satisfied. If you meet one coming the other way, it's a little hairy. You got to watch your left tire. Uh, motorhoming in, uh, in on small roads in Europe is not for everybody, but uh, it's certainly a nice challenge for the right kind of person. Uh, England, Wales, and Scotland. We stopped and saw a little town. One of the last. Uh, this is in a September and saw Highland Games. Just parked there, uh, right where it is camped. I'll let you, you could stop the video and read these tips. Um, you don't want to do this if you're too young or too old. The rental driver age is 26 to 69. Uh, and you don't need a special license. But uh, you can stop and read this. So that's basically my introduction. This is a picture I took on a cell phone camera uh, in Norway. It's just, uh, we've seen so many great things. And that's my introduction to motorhoming in Europe.